so we'll get those tonight and uh, uh, and go on from there. Get back to the normal teaching of, of the Book of Romans. M ministry gifts uh, and they kind of uh, we have to realize that each one of these five people that have a ministry gift also have a motivational gift. All right. So the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, they also have one of the gifts, gifts in one, two, or three of the gifts in, in, the, uh, in the first column as well. And then also the manifestation gifts in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, uh, the Holy Spirit can work his gifts in along with the good gifts that we've been given uh, from birth and or that God has placed us in as a ministry gift. So it's it's all it's kind of like it can be layered, you know. That's why we're all a little bit different, you know. But we we all think, okay, uh, that person over there, they 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 do the ministry, their ministry a little different from me, and I wonder why they 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 don't quite uh, do this as much, but they do more of that, you know. Well, it's because we're working with with three major sets of gifts. One that is ours from birth, and one set of giftings that if you have it, it is an office that God has appointed you to, commissioned you to. And uh, thirdly, the manifestation gifts. Uh, the Holy Ghost has all of those in every one of us. And uh, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, faith, the gift of faith. We all have general faith. But we don't have a gift of faith that far transcends any general faith that we might have. Gifts of healings, working of miracles, prophecy, discerning of spirits, tongues, and interpretation of tongues. Those, those are gifts of the Holy Ghost. And he works through us when he finds us to be a willing vessel to be worked through. Amen. And he's always on. I, I have found Amen. that. He, we don't have to, to turn him on. You know, if, if we're in a place and we're accessible to him, then we're in ministry to somebody he is going to uh, minister through one of his gifts through us. Uh, mm -hmm. And we have the faith for him to do that and, and we are accessible to him. Praise God. I love these three categories of, of giftings and there are other sets of giftings in the Bible uh, and these just happen to be, this first one especially is the one that we're studying in this course because it's in the book of Romans. Okay, let's look at verse 8 again studying verses 6, 7, and 8, and we're on that last verse of that grouping now, verses 6, 7, and 8. Let's look at verse 8 again and focus on the gifting of the administrator that is presented in that verse. It's talk, it talks about the one who ruleth, okay? The verse says, Or he that exhorteth, on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity, he that ruleth with diligence. Now, the, the, the rule that he's talking about is, is what has been named or termed the administrator uh, because the one that rules uh, in a way of taking care of everything in the organization uh, carries administrative skills. And then lastly, he that showeth mercy with children, as we'll look at that gifting probably tonight as well. Uh, Let's look at the lineup of motivational gifts again. We see that this verse 8 is addressing four of the giftings. Exhorter, giver, administrator, and compassionate person, right? Exactly. He that exhorteth on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence, and he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. So there are four gifts in that one verse. And the one that we're looking at right now is the ruler or the administrator. Uh, the book that we are using in these three verses are Discover Your God-Given Gifts by Don and Katie Fortune. And as much as is possible, I will recognize and credit what I get out of the book by asterisks and by uh, the reference to the, the name of the book and by their names as well. Uh, I do the best I can with that, okay? The perceiver that we studied is the eye of the body. The server is the hands of the body. The teacher is the mind of the body. The exhorter is the mouth of the body. The giver is the arms of the body. And tonight we're going to look at the administrator, which is the shoulders of the body. 
and probably also get into the compassionate person, which is the heart of the body. Those are uh, from Don and Katie Fortune's book. Um, in their book on page 163, uh, I like this, what they said about the administrator. The administrator is a born leader. He or she will emerge into leadership just as surely as Joseph did, mm. our biblical example. We could have used other words for this gift, they said. They, they could have called the ruler facilitator, organizer, ruler, leader, or superintendent, but they decided to call it, label uh, uh, that gifting administrator that it best describes one who wrote rules. And it, this isn't about uh, names of giftings. This is, uh, is about the giftings themselves. It's just that they are, have tried to apply some names that would go along with the biblical names, but maybe best describe it in today's terminology, okay? Uh, we're still in uh, with Don and Katie Fortune. Uh, and the characteristics of the administrator. If, uh, uh, if Pastor Bubba here was here tonight, he'd probably recognize a lot of these in his life. They're telling me right now to pick up the microphone. Right. I'm going to Is do that. that. Just, just, just turn it on. Turn it on. And turn it on. And check it. Okay. Yeah, you We've got it. You can sit it back right there. And they're telling me to set it back, so I will. Oh, right okay. there. Sorry. That's all right. You don't have to be sorry in the house of God. Praise God. <laughs> so characteristics of the administrator. Uh, and this is from Don and Katie Fortune's book. Uh, they say, number one, that they're highly motivated to organize that for which he or she is responsible. Now, just because a person is a good organizer doesn't mean that they're a good administrator, okay? But, but good administrators are highly organized. Uh, you'll find that they have everything, a place for everything, and everything's in this place. They have, they'll have uh, uh, duties, list of duties, and they'll have somebody that's that been delegated or, 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 or has volunteered to do that, and they expect them to be there and do it at the time that it's supposed to be done. Um, next, expresses ideas and organization in ways that communicate clearly. Uh, they're able to describe what needs to be done. They're a good communicator. They, they can describe it visually, and they can also put it in written form as well, which you have two different types of people. You have people that are visual learners, and you have people that learn from reading. And so uh, a good administrator can communicate in both areas, usually. Um, the respects and handles authority well. You'll find that they... They just have a knack for walking in authority, not walking in a in a place of I'm in charge here, you know, but just a, a, a natural uh, authoritative position. Uh, and nobody is pressured uh, that is working under them. A true uh, a, a person that's walking in the in that type of authority. They respect and handle authority well. But in addition to that, they will not assume leadership unless it's delegated by those that are in authority. If there's someone in authority over them, then they are going to come up under that authority. And they will never use their authority to try to overwhelm or disrupt or distract from the, 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 the number one authority. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, authority in the church, authority in spiritual matters, it's always necessary for each one of us to walk under the authorities that have been placed in our life. Do you all agree with that? Amen. That's a good yeah. place for an amen. Isn't it? Yes. Uh, they will assume leadership where no specific leadership exists. Okay? I mean, it, it uh, you'll find, okay, Let's say outreach, for example. And we come in and 
Not everybody's here yet. Nobody knows what to do. You know, I mean, it's, it's the administrator, somebody with administrator qualities is probably going to say, folks, we, the, the, the leaders aren't here yet for some reason, they're just running a little late. We need to go ahead and be doing this. We need to be putting these bags in the, in, in the cars, in the trucks or whatever, okay? Mm -hmm. They just go ahead and they assume leadership when leadership is not there, doesn't exist. They especially enjoy working on long-range goals and projects. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I ask myself, do I, do I like working on long-range or short-range? I don't know. I like to see quick accomplishment mm -hmm. myself. I don't know. I, 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 you know, it's something that, that it carries on and carries on for days and weeks and months and maybe even years uh, before you see the the, the, the results. I'm a fragment, fragment statistic and I, 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 I'm very results oriented and so I like to see those results quickly. So the exhorter gift in me is way down the list, okay? I'm not saying it's not there and I don't benefit a little bit from, you know, uh, uh, it being in my life, but it's, it's not my primary gifting uh, by uh, any stretch of the imagination. But Administrators enjoy working on long-range goals. Uh, an administrator is a visionary person with a broad perspective. Uh, they can see God. They can see God's plan for a long way off, and they can see the scope of it. And there may be details that they don't see, but they can see enough of the plan. To get everybody moving in that direction, uh, it's uh, and with their leadership qualities, people will get behind them and will uh, will begin to follow their leadership. Uh, there's when we when we look at at churches, there's one problem with the vision of the leader of the church, who is usually an administrator to some degree, and that's that uh, those that don't have their own vision, God-given vision, can readily accept the vision of the leader of the church. You know, it used to be all the time, catch our vision. Mm -hmm. You know, go where we're going, you know. Catch the vision of the church. Nothing wrong with that at all. But the only, the only issue is if the guy that on the third row, God has given him a vision for ministry, his own ministry, mm -hmm. and it has nothing to do with the ministry of the church, mm -hmm. then he, it's going to seem like that he is outside the parameters of, of being under authority because he's not going to be able to catch the church's vision. He's got his own vision. She's got her own vision. Now, granted, the majority of the church uh, are not in that position. Only those that are called of God for a specific ministry that's really outside the box, outside the, the four walls of the church, okay? And that's the reason they have their own, uh, their own vision. And, but we need to recognize that uh, as a church, we need to recognize those ministries that have visions for that are outside of the box, that are not, uh, they're outside of the vision of the church. Uh, and, and we, I think, those of us in this room understand what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Amen to yeah. that? Amen. 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 All right. But that uh, administrator is a visionary person with a broad perspective. This is where we're going. <laughs> and it looks like this is how we're going to get there. We're going to need a bigger building than what we've got right here. We've already started looking for a bigger building. We don't know exactly where yet, okay? We don't know exactly how yet, but we've already started scoping out some things, you know? Because we know God want, is, I mean, we're going to be moving from this. We're turning this into a studio, from what I've been told. This is going to be turned into a studio, and uh, uh, for uh, those that are 
in the music uh, part of ministry in the church. <laughs> and and uh, the rest of us are going to a, a larger, newer building, more in town where people, it's more exposed to greater number of people. And, and uh, where people say, oh, there's the cross at Mount Sinai. Here they are. We wondered where you were. We just did. We knew you were stuck out there somewhere, but uh, didn't know exactly where you were. So our church will grow because of that vision. But there are other visions in the church that don't have anything to do with the general vision of the church. All right. Easily facilitates resources and people to accomplish tasks or goals. An administrator generally can see the motivational giftings, even the ministry giftings sometimes, of most people in the church, okay, after he's been around them a while. Now, if he's, if he's well-studied, he or she is well-studied in giftings, they ought to be able to apply that knowledge of who's gifted how to the slot, the job that needs to be done within the church, all right? Uh, that's why it's so important for all of us to study giftings, uh, especially motivational giftings. Wow. Um, they put the people, they match up the people to the task and the goals, and it's easy for them to do that. And since the people are under their authority, they can facilitate that very easily. Uh, enjoys delegating tasks and supervising people. Now, this, this one right here uh, is, it separates the uh, the the administrators from the non-administrators, okay? Because if, if, and of course, these, these traits, these characteristics are the purity of the gift, all right? Uh, I, in my own life, I'm not walking in the, the pureness of all the characteristics of each, the, the three primary gifts that I have, and because I'm still, God's still growing me up. Mm -hmm. You know, I believe that, 73 years old, and I'm still growing. <laughs> Not. They do. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. So anyway, I, they have no problem with delegating tasks. They'll tell somebody to do something in a minute. They won't even think. I think is this going to offend that person? Because usually, the administrator uh, does not have a strong compassion gift. Okay. So they don't care if they're going to hurt your feelings or not. Uh, they're going to say, "Hey, I, we need you to do this, and can you start next Sunday doing it?" All right, and uh, uh, in supervising people, uh, it's it's something that they enjoy doing because it's easy for them. It would, that part would be difficult for me because my compassion, my strong compassion gift, would tell on the inside. I'd be thinking, now, it, am I going to look like I'm trying to c control them? Or is it going to offend them? Is it going to hurt their feelings? You know, if I tell them to, uh, you know, you go bring three chairs up from the basement and set them back there for the guests that are coming in, is that going to hurt their feelings? You know, and I, I, it, that's where our giftings play a difference in everybody. Okay, they will endure criticism in order to accomplish the ultimate task. Well, if y'all remember my list of giftings, administrator is next to the bottom <laughs> because I do not like criticism. <laughs> and I, I, I mean, it, 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 it will distract me from the ultimate task to be criticized severely, especially those, uh, those criticisms from my peers, uh, those that are my church family especially. Uh, has great zeal and enthusiasm for whatever he or she is involved in. Uh, they are kind of like the exhorter in that way. They get excited. They, they, they see what God is doing. They want to get it done. Let's go for it, praise God. Hallelujah. They may not be quite as energetic as the exhorter, but, but they, they've got some enthusiasm about the project, okay? And you can tell it. You can see it on them. They may, may not jump up and down like I do, okay? <laughs> uh, but uh, they still got some zeal and enthusiasm for what they're involved in. Uh, they find their greatest fulfillment and joy in working to accomplish 
goals. They're goal-oriented. They're goal-setters. That's all they think about. Okay, if you're going to do something, you got to set a goal. And then you got to have steps towards that goal. You're never going to get to the goal unless you have steps, and then you got to accomplish step one before you go to step two. If you try to accomplish step three before you've accomplished step one, you're not getting anywhere. That's, that's the way the administrator thinks, okay? Uh, by the inch it's a cinch, and by the yard it's hard. That would be a motto of a good administrator. And they find fulfillment in accomplishing goals and steps towards goals. Um, Webster, I don't know if they still, if the modern Webster dictionary defines it this way or not, but back in the 70s, 60s, and well, 70s and 80s, uh, Webster defined success, the word success, as the progressive realization of a worthy ideal. The progressive realization of a worthy ideal. That's what they said success was, which meant that you had to have a worthy ideal. You had to have a goal, an objective. And, and success wasn't really reaching the objective. Success is when you started taking the steps towards, the progressive steps towards the worthy ideal. I thought that was interesting. Yeah. You know, success mm -hmm. is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal. In other words, if I had that ideal out there, I got 10 steps I've got to make. After I've made step one and fixed to go to step two, you can call me successful because I'm on the way. You know, praise God. Uh, accomplishing goals. Is willing to let others get the credit in order to get a job done. Now that's a that, that's a pure characteristic of an administrator. Not all of them have it, okay? But the, in, in its purity and their characteristic, they, it, they, don't, they, won't, they don't want credit for it. You know, let uh, whoever's actually doing the small steps get the credit for it. Uh, they just want the job done, that's all. They don't want credit for it. Okay, prefers to move on to a new challenge when, once something is completed. <laughs> Uh, they don't want to sit and revel and sit back and relax and, and, and have all the accolades played over and over and over again about how they accomplished this fine project. No, let's, if we get the new church in town, uh, let, let's go ahead and get this studio ready. Let's, let's go ahead and what's next? Let's get on to that, okay? So they're, they're ready to move on every time they, they get something completed. Uh, constantly writes notes to self. Now, I, I don't know how this works in. Uh, I, I don't know where uh, Pastor Bubba is on the scale, where his administrative scale uh, 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 skills fall or gifts fall, but I, I don't think I've ever seen him writing notes to himself. I could be wrong. Yeah, but hey, yeah, he's high tech. He probably uses his phone. Probably does. But so he could be constantly writing notes yeah. to himself on his phone. You're right about that. Being old school, I fail to think about those things. As a natural and capable leader, you know, I mean, I think you have to admit, I mean, if Bubba may not be quite um, uh, out spoken on a lot of spiritual things yet. He's growing into it, okay? I mean, I, I remember when we started three years ago and he started gracing his pulpit doing short talks, he's gone a whole lot further along now than when he started, okay? Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, but even at that, if he were to get up and say, this is what we're going to do, uh, we would do it. Yeah. He, he's, he's, he's a capable leader. Yeah. And Pastor Laura would have to be put in that position there as, as well. He knows when old methods are working and when to introduce new ones. Mm -hmm. uh, this, is, this is a skill that not everybody has. 
Uh, most people think, okay, something's not working. Let's stop what we're doing in this and let's do something new, okay? That's not necessarily always the answer. Uh, you may not need to, to let go of the old. You need maybe just to need to enhance it with some new stuff mm -hmm. or get the new part running before you let go of the old. Mm -hmm. Well, a good administrator knows when to accomplish all of that. They enjoy working with and being around people. You'll find that they're easy to talk to. Uh, they can, I mean, they're, they're accessible. If you want to talk to them, they're there. There's no, no issue whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Wants to see things completed as quickly and effectively as possible. Uh, they they, again, they have the goal, they have the steps, but they want those steps walked out. Hey, let's go ahead and get this thing done so we can get on to something else. Uh, does not enjoy doing repetitive or routine tasks. They, they want new projects to work on all the time. They don't want to go back to doing the old things or over and over. Uh, double asterisks is there. Don and Katie stopped talking. But now the double asterisk says they've started talking again. <laughs> now these could be the problem areas of administrators, okay? It doesn't mean they have, every administrator, I mean, administrator has these problems, but they, there's a possibility that they could. They become upset when others do not share the same vision or goals. Now you also have to look at the, uh, at the character, Christian character building in a person, their, their spiritual maturity along with their giftings to tell whether or not uh, this would be a problem. Now somebody who's, who's been uh, in the walk for three or four years but is an administrator and is put in the position of administrator is still maybe carrying some old baggage that they haven't walked out of with the help of the Holy Spirit yet and, and they might get angry when other people don't see it their way, you know. I mean, they, they haven't learned to do this. Yet. You know, they haven't learned to uh, and not judge. Well, that's, you've got, you know, the right to see it your way, and I've got the right to see it my way. Um, it, uh, if they're the administrator, they're probably the one in charge that's going to get done their way anyway, all right? So they can develop outer callousness due to being a target for criticism. Uh, administrators get criticized a lot by people in the pew, especially. Why are they doing it this way? Yeah. Why don't they do it that way? <laughs> why, why do they have to stack all the paper goods in that one cabinet back there? You know, everybody goes walking down that hallway sees toilet paper on, uh, you know, <laughs> through the glass front of the cabinet. Why, do, why can't they put the toilet paper, all kinds of stuff. We went to a church one time where the pastor had a complaint against the, the type of toilet paper they used in the, ba in the, in the uh, ladies' bathroom. <laughs> they wanted a softer, softer uh, toilet paper. I mean, <laughs> can be, pastoring is not easy. It's not an easy deal now. I guarantee you. Can you imagine that? Joy, isn't that the truth? Yeah. <laughs> the cross <laughs> rock truth. Oh. Let's take a vote. Oh. Uh, now they can regress into using people to accomplish their own goals. Since they're used to, to uh, giving out, you know, directives and and, and delegating things to people, it would be easy for them to slip into something, well, I need this done for me. They're used to helping me do things. I'll just get them help to do this, you know? When it's their own personal uh, uh, goal, and they really, they're working in the church environment. Now, if they, if the person they use is in agreement with the fact that they know that it's a personal goal, and yeah, I'm willing to help you with a personal goal. That'd be something different. Uh, they tend to drive self, and they neglect personal and family needs. 
big problem in the church with administrators especially, especially pastor slash administrators. Uh, they they uh, uh, have so many people to deal with. At our little church here is made up mostly of mature Christians. Our are Christians that have reached a plateau that we would consider maturity. We're still growing. We know that. Okay? I don't mean to put us beyond where we are, if you follow what I mean. Amen. And but we, we don't we don't go run into the pastor every time that, you know, we you know, somebody hurts our feelings or you know, any little bitty thing, you know? I mean, I we're but Churches grow, and you get real, a whole lot of baby Christians in. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden, the pressure is on. Mm -hmm. And with larger groups of people, you get the 2 a.m. phone calls mm -hmm. from the hospital. You know, that uh, you, uh, my yeah. teenage daughter's had an accident in the hospital. I, I, I need y'all to come and pray with us right now. You know, I mean, those type of situations. They tend to drive themselves to meet all of those needs, and because of that, they'll wind up neglecting personal and family needs sometimes. Uh, it doesn't always mean that uh, administrators slash pastors are that way, but that could be an issue with them. Uh, it, and this kind of goes along with it. Neglects routine home responsibilities due to in, intense interest in the job. Now, I, I have to I have to watch that myself. And I, I mean, I'm not a pastor. I, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, you know, I've done it before. I'm glad that those pastors sit right there, okay? And praise God for them. I pray for them all the time. Amen. And I'm glad they're the pastors of this church. <laughs> Amen. And you know, I know every once in a while people still call me Pastor John, like we would call uh, William Clinton, President Clinton, if he walked in the room. Because that's what he used to be, you know, and, and uh, but uh, it, it, it's uh, the the intensity of of the responsibilities. You 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 begin to just you get tunnel vision, and you forget sometimes about family. You forget about family responsibilities. Now, I know what my job at home is, right? I mean, I, I cut the yard, I, I, I mow the lawn, you know, I, I, I carry out the garbage, I put new garbage bags in when I carry out the garbage, when on Tuesday mornings I carry the dumpster down to the end of the driveway so the big truck when it comes around to pick them up, you know, and dump it in. I, I do all of that. I get the mail every day. That's part of my job, you know. And, and I, I know what my job, job is. There's sometimes I get wrapped up in putting and either studying for what we do on Wednesday nights or putting the presentation together for what we do on Wednesday nights. And I'm so focused on that, I, I forget about going and emptying the garbage. Just I don't mean to, I just, you know, it's just out of sight, out of mind. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll, I'll forget that Joy is in the house and I need to go say, Honey Bear, how are you today? You know, yeah. give her a little bit of kiss. We waltz around the, the kitchen floor like we do sometimes, you know. And, I mean, we don't do it as much as we used to, but we, we still do. We, we've done it here lately a couple, three times. So, all of us in any ministry, not just pastoral ministry in a church, need to make sure that our ministry responsibilities don't interrupt and distract from our responsibilities to our family. Amen. That's true. All right. Uh, our biblical administrators, what we see in the Bible as people who would ha probably have the gifting of administrator, golly, Joseph. <laughs> you know, I mean, he, he's got to be the king of the administrators. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, Pharaoh saw that in him. And elevated him right on up to where he yeah. just said, "Here, Joseph, take it all. You you just manage it all, you know, because Joseph was very capable of doing that." Uh, Nehemiah, I mean, the wall builder. Huh? I mean, he he was uh, he, he 
he had everybody building just a section of wall right up in front of their house. How were they going to get that great big wall built, you know? Well, he had, he, he, he had the plan. He had the long-range plan. And he had everybody building a section of wall right in front of their own house. And so eventually they got it all built. He didn't even have to organize people and tell them where to go to get it built. He said, just build in front of your house and we're going to get it done. Uh -huh. That's good. And Deborah uh, was a biblical administrator. She was uh, a judge, am I right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I think the only, or was she the only female uh, judge? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure, but she was the one that was most highly talked about in the Old Testament. Uh, David was a good administrator uh, throughout everything. Annas, uh, I'm not familiar with Annas. Uh, this is out of, straight out of the book. If somebody has something on Annas, you can, but obviously. He was one of the chief priests in Jesus' time. That's right. I think he was the father. Caiaphas and Annas. And Annas was the senior, and Caiaphas was the one that was taking it over. So Annas was just kind of back looking, you know, just making sure that Caiaphas did, did everything right, I think. So, okay, James, the brother of Jesus, Jesus. Uh, he, he, took the, he, he was the pastor of the church in Jerusalem, am I correct? Mm -hmm. And uh, so he was a pastor administrator. Jay Aris. Uh, he, uh, I, I remember the, the stories of his servant, I believe, uh, uh -huh. a dog that needed healing, okay? And uh, as far as his administrative, I, I would head to dig deeper in that. But, but those are biblical models of, of uh, uh, administrators that we see. And finally, we see that this verse 8 is addressing the four giftings Exhorter, giver, administrator, and compassionate person are what we call the mercy gift, okay? And let me read the verse again. Or he that exhorteth on exhortation, we've covered that. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity, we've covered that. He that ruleth, we just did that, the administrator, with diligence. He that showeth mercy Show. with cheerfulness. <laughs> and they chose to, uh, rather than, than having a... Uh, Mercy gift, uh, they chose to call it the uh, the compassionate person. Okay, uh, here we go again. I, I'm throwing that list in front of you for nothing but just repetition for recognition sake. Okay, the receiver, server, teacher, exhorter, giver, administrator, and now the heart of the body, which is the compassionate person. Uh, Don and Katie tell us of all the gifts. That of compassion is by far the most frequently bestowed. How wonderful that this is so. They quote a song. He said, what this world needs now is love, sweet love, as the song tells us. I don't know if y'all remember that, mm -hmm. that, uh, that song. It was back in my day. Maybe it's because so many people are hurting that God has created such a vast number of compassionate people. And we're not talking about the compassion of Jesus. Every born-again Christian has, has somewhere inside his spirit being the compassion of our Savior, okay? Mm -hmm. But this, this is a gifting of mercy. This is a gifting of compassion that transcends that that we have of Jesus in our, uh, in our being. Uh, that's almost one-third of the population, 30%. We have elected to use the word compassion rather than mercy because the latter can carry a negative connotation of weakness. And a compassionate person may seem weak, but they're anything but weak, okay? And, and 30%, that means three out of every 10 people in the, the pew, sitting in, sitting in the pews, have a mercy gift, have a compassion gift. Their gifting is, is to love on people. To encourage people to, to be a people person, okay? And that's what we need. Uh, characteristics yeah. of this com compassion person. Uh, they have a tre tremendous capacity to show love. Tremendous. I, I, that, uh, you know, I, I, compassion, it, it showed up third in my list of, of uh, no, second in my list of, uh, uh, in my 
profile that I took uh, what, two weeks ago. And I, I can't say that I always have a tremendous capacity to show love, okay? Uh, maybe the purity of the gift I need to work harder in. They always look for good in people. Now, Joy, I will tell you, I had, this is something that's been developing in me in the last well, year to 18 months. I've, I've been finding more good in people than I used to. I, I've come to a place where I, I'm not as judgmental as I used to be. Okay? I began to think, okay, they have, they have problems. They're, 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 they're trying to make their way. They're doing things what they think they, how they need to do it. They may be missing it. It's not my job to tell them that they are, okay? Uh, my job is just to love and look for There's good in everybody, somewhere. You know, we may not think it of some people, but there's good in everybody somewhere. Amen. I, I can tell you. I mean, I, I, can, I can start complaining about somebody to her, and she said, yeah, but they're this, 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 this. She always sees the good in people. Senses the spiritual and emotional condition of a group or individual. Uh, this, the compassionate person is a sensitive, what I call a sensitive. They, they, they run on their intuition. Their, you know, we talked uh, earlier in this course about imagination and intuition. And those are two gifts that, that are given to us by God. Both, all of us have imagination and intuition. And they can be developed. They can be enhanced. Some people don't use their imagination at all. You know, uh, people who are creators, uh, people who design things, uh, inventors, they use their imagination a lot. Uh, people who uh, help people psychologically, and uh, uh, they, they have developed their intuition to, to be able to understand what another person is going through. Those, those are godly properties. And uh, uh, so they, the characteristics of the compassionate person is that they have developed that intuition to where they, set, they sense the spiritual and emotional condition of, of a group or an individual. They go into, into a room and say, something is wrong collectively in this room. You know, I mean, there's something not right here. Or, man, these people got it all together. They, they, they are really flowing. Uh, they are attracted to people who are hurting or in distress. They're just going to gravitate towards them. Uh, the people who are uh, seem to have it all together, and 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 they're they're you know they're up on the scale a little bit greater in spiritual maturity than some of the others because they've been through it a lot more. Uh, those aren't the people that the compassionate person is seeking out. They're seeking out the down and out, the hurting, and the ones that are in distress. They, they take action to remove hurts and to relieve distress in others. Uh, the giver does this. Uh, some, the server does this, but the compassionate person does it. I mean, it's practically their their mandate, I mean, to remove hurts and relieve stress in other people. Uh, they feel for those people. Uh, they're more concerned for mental and emotional distress than physical distress. Uh, if there's two people, if there's one over here in a wheelchair and one over here that's standing but crying, they're probably going to go to the one that's standing and crying before, not that they don't feel for the person in the wheelchair, but they're going to go, they're, 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 they're triggered by emotional needs. So they're going to go to the one that's crying and then go to the one that's in the wheelchair. All right. Okay, they're motivated to help people have right relationships with one another. You know, especially if they come into a situation where, you know, there's, you know the, the person they're ministering to is, feels like they've been wronged by another person. You know, they, they try to, to, you know, uh, uh, paint the picture that, you know, they, the other person maybe didn't mean it quite the way that it was, it came out, how it happens. Uh, they love opportunities to give preference or place to others. They don't take any credit for themselves. They don't want any, 
any position for themselves. They want to give it all over to other people and tell everybody how great that other person is, right? Uh, is careful with words and actions to avoid hurting others. Compassionate people are very, very strong in that. Uh, easily detects insincerity or wrong motives. Uh, Joy, it will. she's a perceiver, but she's a compassionate person as well. Yeah. And Amen. she can she can tell me, John, you, you got you got wrong motivation there. Your agenda, and you need to look at that again. You know. <laughs> okay, they're drawn to others with the gift of compassion. Birds of a feather flock together, especially with this gift. Okay, I mean they'll get together and they'll hug on each other and love, and then they say, okay, who can we go love? All they want to do is love on you. Come on. Hey, love on you. Love on you. I, I got to love somebody. I got to love somebody. Come on. Come on over here. We got to hug them. Can't, can't let you get out of this hugging. I remember the, 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 the first time I got hugged, I think. Her name was Shirley. And it was Happy Church. And she must have been, she was an African-American lady, and she must have been a good 350 pounds. And I mean, she had a smile that was built into her face. Wow. She radiated joy and happiness. And she walked through the door, and she, I mean, she, it doesn't matter. She came up to me. Hey there! And wrapped those great big arms around me, and I mean, did hug me up like she actually pulled me up off the ground. You know, little me, <laughs> that three hundred fifty pounds of her, right? Eh? It just pulled me right up off the ground. Just shook me, you know. And it wasn't any bad things. It, I, I just felt love all over her. You know, that's all it was. Praise the Lord. She engulfed you. Yeah. Loves to do thoughtful things for others. Oh, they, they just get off on it. I mean, it's, what can I do for that person? What can I do for that one over there? So, you know, cheer them up. Make them feel better. Yeah. Make them encourage them. Make, make them feel like they're, uh, they're somebody, praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah. It's yeah. trusting and tries to be trustworthy. They, they, they're going to shoot straight with you. You know, they're... they're, they're uh, still staying in the in in the line of these other things, trying to avoid hurting you, uh, and their actions with their actions and their words, they're still going. That's got to be a tight wire to walk, you know. But somehow they walk it, all right. They 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 they're trusting and they're trustworthy. They avoid conflicts and confrontations. I mean, they'll do anything. To avoid a conflict. Anything to avoid a confrontation. I mean, they'll go out of their way. Mm -hmm. They'll spend money. They'll not show up or they'll show up. They'll do anything to avoid conflict and confrontation. They don't want the other person to be upset, unhappy with them or the situation. Either one. Mm -hmm. And it's a big deal. It's a big deal. Um, doesn't like to be rushed in a job or activity. It's typically cheerful and joyful. <laughs> it's typically cheerful and joyful. And I would say that that's at church and at home as well. Okay, Everywhere they are. Would you say that, my love? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, is ruled by the heart rather than the head. I mean... Where you take an administrator, that's ruled by their head. And they see a mercy person, a compassionate person, doing something, they would think, why in the world are they doing that? I mean, because it's it's the difference between head rule and heart rule. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I mean, Joyce, she doesn't say quite so much anymore, but she used to every other phrase out of her mouth is just, it's a heart thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a heart thing. Yeah. Right? That's what compassionate people do. Mm -hmm. 
They rule by their heart and not by their head. They rejoice to see others blessed and grieves to see others hurt. Mm -hmm. Is a crusader for good causes. Mm -hmm. Intercedes for the hurts and the problems of others. It amazes me. I, I used to get calls a lot. People wanted me to pray with them on the phone. People wanted counsel on the phone. What does the words, I'm in this situation. And I, I don't, I guess everybody thinks I'm retired or something. I don't know. But, they, but her phone rings all day long. I mean, she's constantly talking to people and praying to people on the telephone. Okay? She intercedes for them even when they hang up. She intercedes. So there are occasions she even brings it to me and says, look, we need to pray for this, this person. Okay, there could be some problems <laughs> with all that we've gone through. We can see there could be some problems with the compassion person. Not that there always is, but they tend to be indecisive. Why would you think that? Because they don't. They want to please everybody. Yep. So it, they've got to come up with a decision that is going to please everybody. So they're usually, their easiest thing is to not to come up with a decision about it at all. All right? That way they can't hurt anybody's feelings. All right? They tend to be indecisive. They're often prone to take up another person's offense. Now, Joy has learned kind of the, how to handle that, but it still happens to her, I think, from time to time when she sees somebody else hurt. She's not even involved. She sees somebody spoken to rudely or, or somebody acted against them in a bad way. She gets offended mm -hmm. as much as the person, even though she wasn't even involved. Mm -hmm. She gets offended as much as the person it that it was directed against. And they're prone to do that, to take up another person's offense. Mm -hmm. And generally... Uh, we found that the other person can forgive their offender and they, they're all right. But the, per, the compassionate person doesn't give up that offense as quickly mm -hmm. as the one that was actually offended. You're exactly right. They carry the offense against the offender mm -hmm. for a longer period of time. Not always a problem, but can be a problem for the compassionate person. Mm -hmm. They're easily hurt by other people. They're mm -hmm. sensitive. Uh -huh. I mean, God made them the, I mean, he, he, the, people are, are, all their life have probably told them, you need to, you need to get some tough skin here. Mm -hmm. I mean, you need to, you need to, you know, I mean, you need to man up. You know, you, you need to get where things don't bother you. You know, and but they can't that, because they're gifting. They get hurt easily mm -hmm. because they are sensitive. They run on an intuitive path that God has created in them, and they have enhanced that intuitive path. They've used it. They've developed it, uh, just like a perceiver has, mm -hmm. and so they get. They're sensitive. They're so sensitive, they can, if, if they've got a perceiver in them, they can read what's going on in that other person. And, but they also pick up all of the little things, the hurts, the wounds, all of those kind of things, okay? So they're easily hurt by other people. They can empathize too much with the suffering of others. They, go, they go, go home with it. They take it home with them. Yep. They, they take it to whatever they do while they should be doing something else at home. Uh, <laughs> they, in, instead of, uh, uh, well, they're just involved with it. They should have left it there mm -hmm. at the church or the counseling office or wherever it was and walked away from it, and they never should have taken it home. It's, they're, they're taking their job home with them is what's happening, okay? They can empathize too much with the suffering of others. Mm -hmm. They have an affectionate nature 
that is often misinterpreted by the opposite sex. I've seen this over and over and over and over and over again. Now, y'all know I do one thing. When, I, when, when, when a lady goes to hug me and they come like this, I immediately step to the side and I do a side hug, okay? I believe that's the appropriate uh, type of hug for uh, except your wife or your, your spouse. Uh, that's the appropriate hug for uh, a, a, a man and, and a woman that's not his spouse. And it's, uh, but it, it is a problem. It can be and is a problem many, many times. Because men pick up, especially with women who are compassionate and loving and affectionate. And, and they, they, they want to spend a lot of time and talking and everything. And the man perceives it as, you know, they're, they're interested. Okay? So when really that's not the case. They're just, they are interested, but it's from a different perspective altogether. Okay, biblical compassion people. The Good Samaritan had to be a compassionate man. All right. I mean, he stopped what he was doing. He made sure the man got to a place and he spent his own money for him to be taken care of. Okay, the book of Ruth. Ruth, uh, you Old Testament people could probably tell me all about Ruth and Naomi and, and how Ruth was a compassionate uh, uh, lady. Uh, Joseph, the legal father of Jesus, uh, uh, was obviously a compassionate person and they provide the scripture. This is from Don and Katie's book as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Jeremiah, the whole book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah is called the weeping prophet. I mean, he, he, was, he had compassion for uh, the, the, people, the children of Israel. I mean, he, he cried over them. Uh, Rachel, in and, and, and the Old Testament uh, book, I, I, I don't have to, so I'm not a real Old Testament person. I can't tell you what the, the, the compassionate traits were in Rachel. You can probably uh, tell me, but she is a biblical example of Rebecca as well. Uh, the if y'all were writing these, I'll give you just a more just a little uh, more time. But those are the biblical, maybe not all of them, but it is a list of biblical models of people that uh, in the Bible that had the gifting of uh, the mercy gift or the compassion gift. Um, okay, we are going to stop there in verse nine because we're going to leave the gifts at this verse and then we're going to look at some characteristics uh, probably for the next week to two weeks of the walk of the model Christian. Uh, things that, uh, uh, that the Christian ought to be uh, uh, developing within themselves if, if, if it's not a developed trait already, uh, a mature trait. And it starts with verse 9 and goes through the rest of the chapter. Um, it, it's, a, uh, it's a good, and it, it's uh, uh, different than the study that we've had the last uh, three, four weeks, five weeks maybe on, on these uh, verses of, of giftings. So any questions about giftings before we leave? Thank you all for attending by social media.